Coke? Coke. No, man. feel pretty lousy, too. It hit me all of a sudden. A nausea, dizziness, you know. What did you have for breakfast? Gee, I can't remember. Eggs? No. Bacon? Bacon, no. Wheat toast? Whole wheat toast? Tell me, did you have a soft drink and ice cream? Oh, yeah, there you go. Now I remember. Okay, now, what is your name? Uh, Norman. Good. Tell me, Norman, do you always have a soft drink and ice cream for breakfast? Uh, no, sometimes I have a fruit pie and a donut. Mm -hmm. Now, I need to go into your past medical history. Think back to your childhood and tell me a little bit about your prepubescent life. All I can say is I was bad. Could you go into more detail? Uh, it all started at the age of eight or so. I was always restless, you know. I could never stay in one place. I even remember how my mother used to yell at me every time I rocked myself to sleep. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But if anything happened in class, like say someone had dropped a pencil, I was always the first to know. Norman, will you pay attention? Eventually, I gave up school. I guess I could never really fit in. Boy, Norm, you are really a good case. That bad, huh? No, no, what I mean is that the worse the problem, the better the results. Well, let me explain it this way. The ingestion of simple carbohydrates often prevents the neocortex from operating optimally. Optimally? Junk food wrecks the brain. See. Your early childhood experiences with your diet have caused this aberration in your behavior. Aberration? Yes, Norm. Aberration. But wait a minute. I think I can explain it better in my room full of charts. Come with me. Come on, Norman. Dr. Wong, Dr. Wong, please report to the brain bank. Dr. Wong. Come on, Norman. It's in here. Welcome, Norman, to the Gallery of Charts. <laughs> uh, this uh, first chart shows what happens to a hyperactive child or a person like yourself who's been eating the wrong foods for the last 20 or 30 years. A typical situation would be something like this. If you eat a candy bar at bedtime, the blood sugar rises and then falls so rapidly by morning it may be down as low as 40 milligrams per cent. Now that's just not enough to allow the brain to work at all. The next real danger is eating a sugary breakfast. At 7 a.m., the blood sugar starts to rise, and by 9 a.m., it's peaked out. Under the influence of insulin, the blood sugar falls, and of course, that releases adrenaline. And the adrenaline is used to get the sugar back in the bloodstream again. But the adrenaline also creates these terrible feelings of nausea and rapid heart, the all-gone feeling. Now, let me show you the next chart. Uh, all right, Norman, this chart shows that the brain has to have a constant supply of energy in order to function. 
If the supply of nutrients is decreased for one reason or another, these people become moody, depressed, or even violent. The brain is the busiest organ of the body. If the supply of sugar decreases, the little lights go out. Norman? 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 Let's go to the next chart. Norman. Now, uh, this chart, Norman, summarizes the findings we have in these hyperactive children. They're very ticklish and sensitive. They have to do some rhythmical thing, often rocking or sucking the thumb. They usually have trouble going to sleep at night. Most of these children are helped with calcium and magnesium. This is often complicated by the problem with being a Jekyll and Hyde sort of person. These mood swings often give them away. They just crave sugar, and it's the sweets that make the blood sugar go up and down. And because of this, they cannot concentrate, and they frequently have anxiety attacks. And this is usually due to the fact that they have this hypoglycemia. Food allergies plays a big role with them. They should be allowed to nibble small amounts frequently. Many of them have great need for vitamin B6. Do you want me to memorize all this? Oh, no, no, Norman, of course not. The first thing we have to do to stop this wide fluctuation of the blood sugar is to eliminate the foods that have quick sugar in them. That means no more white or brown sugar, syrup, molasses, and honey must be eliminated from your diet. No more soft drinks, ice cream, box cereals, prepared mixes, or bleached flour. Well, then what do I eat? The most important foods for you to eat are proteins, long-acting carbohydrates, and some fats. Meat, seeds, nuts, and legumes, raw or steamed vegetables are all good. Vitamins, especially the B vitamins, are all important. If you are low in these vitamins, a disease will come along someday and your immune system won't work. You see, Norman, you were a classic example of a ticklish and goosey kid with a short attention span who was more likely to have trouble in school. If you'd only eaten good foods, you might have lived up to your potential. But as it is, you're just a pathetic case, somewhere on the borderline between total destruction and destined to live a life in a maximum security prison. Hey, now, wait a second. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just joking, Norman, just joking. Really, what I'm trying to say is, if you follow my directions and you eat the right food and take the right vitamins, you will feel better in just a few weeks. I hope you're right, Doc. <laughs> you wait and see. But in the meantime, I want to schedule for some more appointments. You have to have some dietary therapy. Uh, therapy? Uh, what therapy? Now you come. Just come with me. You'll see. For the first few days, we'll be putting you through a series of tests to determine which foods you should be eating. And additionally, I'll also try to demonstrate the importance of physical exercise. Hiya, Doc. <clears throat> Seriously, in conclusion, the hyperactive child is not always hyper. A better term for this is the attention deficit disability. Basically, it is a better phrase because these people or children are not always moving excessively, but they are chiefly characterized by their distractibility and their short attention span. They are unable to disregard unimportant stimuli. A car goes by, someone coughs, a pencil drops. They respond to all these stimuli and their work remains unfinished. They act as if they were never taught self-control. In turn, they get scolded easily. Their classmates make fun of them. Basically, they're considered goof-offs. They have the potential, but they just can't use it. Well, well hello, Norman. Hi, Doc. You just look great. Oh, I feel great. You know, Doc, your advice on nutrition and vitamins really helped me. It changed my whole life. I love my dogs and cats, and even my friends say I smell better. You know, Doc, I want to do something for you. I just got a job as janitor in this building. I'd like to vacuum your rug. Why, um, sure, go ahead. <laughs> Great.
the hyperactive child needs more help than the ordinary child. Growing up for anyone can be a stressful and emotional experience. So be sure that your child is fed properly. If not, he may acquire a bad self-image. So read his or her body and look for the key symptoms and signs that indicate junk food related problems. Thanks, Norman. Great, Doc.